Okay, thank you, Ty, for the introductions. Uh, very excited today, guys, to um, share this um, improve your reporting with uh, easy to use business intelligence tools on association forum. And uh, today I'll be presenting this one with uh, Alice Drummond, which is uh, MVP Power BI and co founder of Discover EI. So let's get started. So agenda today, I'll, I'll go through a quick scenario about the problem of reporting, and then we do a hands-on getting started on Power BI desktop, and then we'll be followed by uh, tips from the MVP, which is Alice, um, on, on how to create a meaningful and impactful reports. And then after that, we'll uh, have a wrap up and Q&A for you if you have any questions. OK, so uh, talk about the membership and associations world. Uh, meet Daniel. Daniel is a membership administration at ATAA. Um, most of the time, uh, what Daniel is doing is he, need, he really need to be on top of the activity within the membership organizations. So he need to create a periodical report and represent this to the senior executive and also the team member. Now, uh, the report is not the most exciting thing that he do on his job. He took uh, a lot of effort just to come up with the report. So even though he's smiling in here, but he is actually bleeding inside. Um, so he spent most of the time building the report and, and presenting it uh, to the senior executive. Now, the next person we want to meet is Sarah. Sarah is the CFO of the ATAA Association. She likes a single page view, um, overall um, monitoring system of whatever happened in the association. She's a very numerical person. She likes spreadsheet and she likes a number that can represent uh, how good the association has performed on the last um, weeks or months or even uh, years uh, that has been coming. So um, Daniel's Daniel's work most of the time will be pre prepare, preparing the report for this for Sarah. Now, the last guy that we want to meet is Andrew. Andrew is the IT guy. He's not exactly working for Daniel or Sarah. He's working for the IT department, but he spent most of his time to extract the data from all these various uh, system within the organizations just to give to Andrew and so that he can build a spreadsheet on top of it. Although he has a PhD in engineering and mathematics, but most of the things that he do on his job is not really exciting as, as, um, as much as he can be. So guys, you can see here, the problem is this. The data for creating a report is often scattered in multiple different system. And not everyone will be able to access and extract the data. Sometimes we will have um, to, we will have to talk to IT to extract the data for us. And this could take another two or three days before we can get, get the data in the spreadsheet. And there's another two or three days to get it clean and then make it a clear and concise a spreadsheet and build a, build a chart on top of it. So this overall process may take, take, take up to 1.5 weeks. So by the end of 1.5 weeks, that data may no longer be relevant. So this kind of reporting, this kind of process is not really efficient at all. So in the next slide, we will talk about the Power BI. So Power BI is really easy to use and everyone can, can start using it um, and, and build a really nice dashboard, a real time, real time, reporting for your system. So how to get started? So there's a link in here. So you can Google Power BI desktop download, or you can just click this link and it will take you to the Microsoft site where you can download the Power BI applications. So I will switch to Power BI desktop now.
OK, so this is the download page for Power BI. So if you even have a subscription to Microsoft product on your organization, Power BI could be a free tool that you can already use um, in your tool set. So once you click download, it will install an application and then you'll be able to get started with Power BI straight away. So when I open Power BI like this, um, So this is, this is the first page of Power BI. Uh, to get started, you simply need to first, first of all think about the data that you want to visualize on. So you can click Get Data on the left-hand side in here. And as you can see, there are a lot of sources that you can get the data from. So it's not only Excel or text file, uh, but if you have a CRM system such as Dynamics 365, or even you have Salesforce and Marketo, um, they're all available here for you to use. And uh, it's quite easy, simply uh, click and connect and you can start a uh, connect to, to your data source. But today for this purpose of the demo, we're going to use a simple one, which is Excel spreadsheet. So connect to the Excel spreadsheet and then I'll just open my Excel data that I already prepared earlier. So Parvia will read all the uh, table and sheets that we uh, resides within your files. And you can pick and choose on which, which table that you want to include on this reporting. So in this case, I will choose this three a table. So click loads. So once it's loaded, it will show up on the right hand side in here. So let's say I want to draw a quick diagram about how many people um, joining and exiting the membership association each year. So I'll pick one of these column charge. And then within the membership data, I have a column called join date. And then I want the count of a member that is joining that year and then the member who are exiting on that particular timeline. OK, so as you can see, uh, as, as soon as I drag and draw, it will start drawing the chart. And then I'll draw another chart in here. So probably I'm interested on the membership level that the organization has. So let's create a pie chart. And then I'll put the membership level as the legend. And then I'll put the member ID count as the value. So now I have this pie chart who's telling me nicely how many members is in at, at each different membership level. Now I'll add another one. For fun, I will just create a map now. It looks very cool. So map has a location. So in this case, I'll probably do on the state level. I'm not that interested on the very detailed level of the suburb, but probably just the state. So I'll put the state, and then I want to know how many members that I have on each state. So I'll put the size as the member ID, and suddenly I can visualize how many members that has uh, that we have in each state. And the good thing about this one as well is that all these three charts, it looks like three independent charts, but they actually link together. So for example, if I want to see the count of a member that is joining and exiting of each year, I can just click on the new Southwest part here, and then it will show me that all these numbers are only for people who are joining and exiting in New South Wales, and subsequently, the number the number of the membership level will be highlighted for the New South Wales as well. So it's not only working one way, but it's actually as soon as you click one of the filter, it works for all the other related chart as well. I can also do filter by the membership level. So for example, I just want to know all the affiliate members. So if I click affiliate. This will show me the spread of the affiliate membership on each state and also show me um, the number of people who are joining 
as an affiliate on each year. So guys, as you can see, this is very powerful um, drag and drop and click through a drill down application that you can use straight away to visualize your data in no time at all. Now, you probably will be thinking, oh, this is quite good and you spend a, a little bit more time and spending uh, in building your report or dashboard. So in the next 20 or 40 minutes, you probably quickly come up with one of these beautiful dashboard. This is one of the dashboard that we think is quite useful in terms of uh, associations. Um, this is visualized uh, a lot of different key metrics within the associations itself. So for example, on the top here, I got six different um, six different important metrics. For example, average cost of acquiring new member is telling me how much I have to spend if I want to acquire a new member. Total number of joining, uh, people who join the membership, average score of engagement index. So we use kind of a in numbers or index to, to measure how engage our member is with us in the conversation, whether it's through phone or through uh, walk-in or uh, maybe face-to-face -face chat or anything about from social media. And then there's a the retention rate. Retention rate is telling us how many percent of our member is tend to renew their membership year by year. Average years of tenure is actually showing us how long in average people staying within our membership. So in this case, 2.69 years, which is most of our membership doesn't go past to the third year. NPS record is telling us how likely the membership, uh, how likely our member will uh, recommend the mem our membership product to, to their friends or colleagues. So this six metric is very useful for people like Sarah, who, are, who is our CS, CFO, to see how the membership is going year by year. So now, once we got all this information in our dashboard, we can start asking smart questions. Now, you probably want to ask, OK, we, ha we have all this data from the past five years since our membership started. If I want to double my membership by 2021 into 500 members, how much budget should we set aside? OK, let's let let's see through the our Power BI dashboard and see if we can answer these questions. So as you know, our data is based on the 300 uh, members that we got at the at this point of 2020. So in order for us to get 500 members, we need to acquire another 200 people. But before that, think about the retention rate. We have retention rate of around 91.12%, which means um, out of the 300 people, maybe only 91% of them will survive for them to become our member in the next year or so. So let's um, scale back a bit and talk about how many people will be will be left out with we will left out with next year. So it's probably around 91% times 300 is around 273, which means we will. To, to achieve 500, we will need to acquire another 227 new member. Now, how much does it cost for us in terms of marketing to get 227 members? Now, that's when we look at our um, cost of acquiring new member in here. So we look through the years. We have a good years and we have a bad year. So for example, in 2018 here, I can see that in 2018, our average cost of acquiring new member is 2.3. Uh, yeah, it's around 2,300 basically. So which is not really good the campaign or really effective campaign. But if we look at 2019, 1,100, it seems like this is the most effective campaign and give us the, the most worth of uh, marketing money that we spend 
throughout the years. So if we can replicate this kind of campaign on 2020 and 2021, our cost of uh, acquiring new member will be 1,100 each member, which means if we need to acquire 227, we probably um, need a budget of $249,700 to get uh, our number up to 500. So if you put a ballpark figure of 250,000K for marketing budget for next year, it's probably the right ballpark. Now the next questions we want to ask, maybe, um, we want to ask, have we done enough for the other set? So uh, throughout a membership, uh, working with a different membership that I've been working in the last couple of years, uh, most of the membership will be um, concentrated in New South Wales and Victoria. This is simply because New South Wales and Victoria has more demo, has more populations than other um, states, uh, for example. So um, if we say, okay, New South Wales and Victoria is more, most populable, um, what is our number there? So it looks like it is reflected on our membership as well, which we have around 81 people on uh, New South Wales and uh, around 71 people in Victoria. So have a look uh, for a second on the NPS record for New South Wales. So in New South Wales, the NPS record is not really good, but the engagement index is 45.59, which is quite high. So this is questions that we need to ask in executive level, what kind of engagement we have with our member. If we have 45% of our member having a conversation with us, but the NPS record is, does not reflect a positive outcome from that. Is it probably a positive engagement or is it negative engagement? Now compare that to Victoria. Looks like the people in Victoria like us more than people in New South Wales. And if you compare that again, with Western Australia, well, the NPS score is much higher and it's reflecting more, more promoter than detractor to our membership. And this engagement score is quite high as well, which means the regional manager in uh, WA is probably doing a good job, but the number of the member in there is quite small as well. So probably once you scale up, how can we make sure that those kind of engagement and those kind of uh, positive feedback, positive relationship we have with those members will stay intact? And then the last questions you probably want to ask, what the future looks like? Uh, what is 2020 and 2021 look like? So in terms of our retention rate overall from the past uh, five years, is quite high, 91.12 is quite high, which means most of our members are renewing. But due to NPS record being negative in New South Wales, we need to ask these questions, whether the number of the, at uh, the growth rate of the membership in New South Wales will become sustainable in the next um, one or two years, because the fact that most of our member will, is no longer uh, become our promoter in New South Wales. So what can we do about that in what kind of program that is good for us to do on 2020 and 2021 to actually turn the conversations around? So those kind of insight is really useful uh, just and, and it's quite easy just by looking in all these numbers and just by clicking here and, and it gives us and tell us a story. So with that in mind, um, Power BI data storytelling is very important things. With that in mind, I will uh, pass to Alice, who is going to show us more about this um, storytelling. Thank you. So um, before we wrap up, I'll just uh, want to share with you a little bit of tips and tricks if you want to get started with Power BI. So uh, if you want to get started with Power BI, first of all, uh, start small and build from it. So start with the data that you feel familiar with. For example, if you're not familiar with the integrations with 
all your um, CRM system or finance system, just start with Excel spreadsheet and make it easy, make it simple and do the report that you understand what the meaning of the report is and convey the message correctly. And then uh, think about the audience. So who you want to communicate this with and what you want to communicate and build your data or dashboard around the message that you want to uh, pass on so that people will really understand once they look at the dashboard, they really understand uh, what is this about and uh, what we can analyze on what kind of insight we will be able to derive the information uh, from this dashboard. And then the last tip is, um, yeah, as Alice mentions before, help is never far away. So there's a very good uh, Power BI course by EVX on um, how to build a Power BI dashboard. Uh, it is actually created by Microsoft. So go and open the website and, and register and um, do some of the courses that will, will, will let you familiar, familiarize yourself with the Power BI concept. And then there's a couple of YouTube channels that is run by the MVP as well. One of them is Guy in a Cube. Uh, there's a very good tips and tricks that you can learn from this YouTube channel. Okay, so just to wrap up what we have achieved today. So, um, Daniels is now more happy man than before. So, by utilizing Power BI, he can write and he can provide all this very interactive dashboard very easily and doesn't take one and a half weeks anymore to build a report. It's quite easy to update as well. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet, it's just simply by refreshing the data with the new new one and you press refresh data on Power BI and all the spread, all the charts that you've been built will be updated automatically. And now Sarah and the teams are more happy uh, simply because you can they can see the report in an instant. He, she doesn't have to wait for another one and a half weeks to see how the organizations performed one and a half weeks ago, because that's no longer relevant in some cases. And then the ability to drill down and look at each matrix and see uh, the key point indicator of the performance is really, really useful. Um, and really the ability to draw an insight, valuable insight, each business um, business unit and the time frame is really useful for 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 them to run the association. So, of, overall, it's a more happier people, more happier place to work on, and also they have more overall informations about how they can serve the member better uh, and and progressing to the next year. So, thank you everyone. Um, this is the end of the presentations and I will open the floor for Q&A if there's anyone who has uh, questions that you would like us to cover.